Hi, I'm Dirk. I work as a prototyper at Google, and I want to talk to you today about how to teach your browser some new tricks. Or rather, as I wanted to teach, say firsthand, like teach your old dog some new tricks because they can. So, about four years ago, there was a lot of discussion about a thing called Long Desk. And uh, at that point, the HM5 working group basically decided to get rid of it. And then there was a massive shitstorm that uh, fell along. And uh, there was lots and lots of discussion on what to do. So uh, there, Bruce Lawson, lovely fellow, wrote a epic blog post, which was followed by an even more epic uh, common thread in which uh, things were mentioned of how we can basically go ahead and save or make it better or get rid of it. And so first of all, who of you know what long desk actually is? That is not very many people. And that is for good reason, because it's terribly, terribly underused. So what long desk is, and um, there's links on all of the slides, by the way, and you can download the slide deck later on. The link to the slide deck is on the very last one, so don't cheat. So the long desk is a uh, little attribute on an image, and uh, instead of using the alt text, so who of you know what an alt text is? <laughs> Many more people, excellent, excellent. So instead of using, or actually additionally to using to the uh, alt text, you can go ahead and define a whole page to describe that one image that you're showing there, which is actually something that is generally useful for very complex images. So the image example show here is basically an image, and the long description is pointing to a URL, just the way it should be. Now, something that is also defined in the W3C standard is that it must be discoverable, and it must be discoverable by automatically, uh, it should be, a, I'm just reading what it says here. It must be simple for a user agent to automatically discover a description provided for a given image, which is something that hardly anyone does, but some of them do or did, and like undid. And then the other thing is a user should be able to determine that there is a description available for a given image. That is something that not one of them did. So basically there's this hidden little gem of information uh, on that image, and nobody knows about it. So I was approached by somebody. <laughs> I had to, John. I was approached by John um, about what we can do about this. I think we met at the uh, CSUN, or was it at the Open Web Camp? I can't even remember. There was. I had a period. Yes, yes. Oh yeah, Lucy, for you, the information, uh, it's an uh, it animated GIF of John holding up a beer. It's fantastic. The link is John Folio Awesome Pose. So there was a months and months being followed by discussion on what we could do, and I eventually gave in and wrote a little jQuery plugin. That uh, GitHub link is up there, uh, which basically allowed somebody who runs a website and uh, has long desk attributes on their images to expose those to people without assistive technology. So for the first time, or well not for the first time, but for the first time that I quite liked the way they did it, was uh, there's suddenly a way that people who don't have, let's say, a screen reader who exposes those information to them were actually able to see that. And this is how it looked like. So this is a example page, I stole this from a web aim back then, they don't actually have it anymore. Um, what it does is that image that you just saw disappear, this one, has suddenly a little icon on the bottom and when you hover over or when you tap on it, it says click for more information and then you do and then the content of the URL that is given in the uh, long desk attribute is loaded via Ajax onto that page, onto the image and shown so you can actually read it and consume it and get the information out of there. And compared to that image that you see in the example, that written information is actually pure gold. It makes much more sense to me than the image itself. So I was really happy about this. And then John again uh, went ahead and posted that thing basically everywhere. And there was lots and lots of discussion on what to do. And everybody was kind of excited about 
oh yeah, we should do something. We should do something. And yeah, there wasn't really anything done, was there? But <laughs> I think it ended up that the W3C did eventually uh, get back the attribute. I don't claim that I have to do anything with that. However, my little plugin that I wrote, this is the JavaScript code that drives it, it's completely irrelevant right now, but it should just say that it's a very, very small code that had very big impact and was very easy to write. And this is what it does to the browser. So what you can see is that uh, it's really just adding a little DOM node, a little button on top of the image that says, click here for more information about this image. And when you click on it, it makes an AJAX request, adds another information, sets focus on it, so it's actually nicely ex uh, expressible to people who do rely on uh, uh, assistive technology as well. So some browsers don't even work for that, worked as well. Very happy about this. And then something else happened, and it has been bugging me for the last four years. Uh, again, John made, uh, handed me to Charles. Charles uh, will give a talk right after this one in another room. And uh, in this room? Okay. Never mind. Next talk, you should see it, it's great. Uh, so Charles has been working on a browser extension for Chrome. He was working for, uh, not for Chrome, for Opera. He was working for Opera back then and had this little extension and it worked. And I was asked to, I think, make another extension for another browser or something. And I just couldn't do it. I was, so this is how the extension looked like. You basically had to click on the top right and then it would show the image again and some text on it. And I liked the idea that I did that and I couldn't really do it because I find it looks dreadful and the code was terrible. And I looked at documentation on how you write extensions for other browsers and it's dreadful and every browser does it differently. It was painful. So while I was procrastinating on this, uh, Patrick Lauke did the same extension for Firefox and it worked there just, I think there it actually integrated in the context menu so you had to right click on an image, hoping it may or may not have a long desk. Then it might be there and then you clicked on it and it would then show the text. It wasn't really much better either. However, I was still procrastinating. And again, while I was procrastinating, my good friend, uh, where is he? Oh, he left, never mind. Um, uh, Dennis Lambre did a blog post, a nice summary of basically everything that is right or wrong about Longdesk. Most of it was wrong, most of it was right. There's a lot, a lot of information. I, there's a link to this article. If you want to know anything about Longdesk, read it up there. It's rather a complete list of everything that's terrible at Longdesk, or what, what, what rent bad about it. So. Four years I've been actively, very heavily, and in my own sweat sitting there, procrastinating over not doing anything about this. And then I went to CSUN again. And at CSUN, uh, Joe Dalton uh, spoke to me, saying, hey, I saw this, I know, it was John again. <laughs> John handed my plugin that I wrote four years ago to Joe Dalton. And uh, he actually was probably the first one who got excited about Longdesk in the last four years. And he did something amazing. Uh, he wrote something for himself. I think it's basically a mix of what Carl did and what I did. And uh, he wrote an extension for WordPress. And because of the unique position that Joe is in, uh, he managed to get this into WordPress. So basically, if you want to use Longdesk, in WordPress, and if you write the text for it, then WordPress will very beautifully expose it to you by showing this little button under an image, and if you would click on it, you would see again the content of this uh, long desk image. This is the first time that actually long desk has a platform that is bigger than, let's say, the five examples I can find on the internet, because by default, <coughs> WordPress would actually support it. So. Again, after four years of active procrastination, I was suddenly feeling maybe I should have done something four years ago. Uh, however, what basically kept me from doing anything back then was not just that I was 
basically lazy bastard, but also that writing an extension for one browser didn't quite get me, because I've been building websites, and I've been building websites in a way so every browser can use them. What the hell is the point about writing an extension that one browser can use? So then I really stumbled over, uh, how's it called? Crossrider. So in Crossrider, I only saw this link and I saw this text and was like, whoa, yes! It allows me to, or it announces that I can create cross-browser extension for every browser in minutes, and that was triggering all the buttons that I needed to basically, yeah, sure, I'd try that. Oh, also, it says it's free. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and it powers lots and lots of installation, apparently. So obviously, I registered very quickly, and then I ended on this page where it tells me that I should go ahead and create a new extension. So I did, and it welcomes me to the developer dashboard and it tells me what I can do in actually rather nice, simple words, so I'm not scared away, and I say start coding, and then I'm here, and uh, right away I found this very well hidden, that's why I have this massive button and uh, massive error showing this teeny tiny button. It tells me that I can upload existing code. So, of course, I just went ahead and downloaded that code I haven't touched in four years from GitHub <laughs> and uploaded it there. And then I started reading docs. Of course, you start reading the docs after you did something first, of course. So I have my code up there. This is the code, by the way. You can still see that it hasn't been, it's still version 1.0. It hasn't been touched in four years. Um, and it's suddenly up there. And it's fantastic. So this is how it looks like. Uh, you click there, it wants you to up select your files, and then they're there. And then, um, having looked at the documentation afterwards, I found that I'm sub there's basically two important files, and that is the one thing I found in the last four years when I was looking at how to write uh, browser extensions for one or more browsers. Basically, that's the one thing that is basically the same thing in every documentation for a specific browser extension. There's always a foreground and a background JavaScript file, while the foreground JavaScript file is the one that will actually be executed in the context of the page. So it's like you just add your own JavaScript file to somebody else's page. I quite like that idea because that sounds like hacking something. And then there's the background JavaScript file, which is the one that runs constantly while the browser is running and is able to absorb something like clicks on a button in the Chrome UI. I didn't really need it at that point, so I just ignored it. So I went ahead and made that foreground JavaScript file. It's called extension JavaScript file here because they abstract it away for, so it works for everybody. So I went ahead and included my long desk JavaScript extension code, which is just one JavaScript file, and the CSS that is needed to make it all look nice loaded that in the extension JS. So um, what it does, quick information beforehand, uh, what Crossrider does is it will load jQuery for you. Just assume it's already there. And then it will fire the app api.ready function and will pass in a dollar, which is your reference to the latest jQuery. It takes care of that for you, thank God. And then you can use an app api.resources.include CSS, which will load the resources that you added by uploading them here, and they will live inside of the extension code, so whenever somebody is coming and installs the ex extension, that file will be in their browsers. You don't have to host it. You don't have to care about it. It's being loaded. And then I went ahead and initialized that code I last initialized four years ago uh, by just calling the uh, jQuery extension. And then I, oh yeah, there's one more thing that I added because I work for Google and I work specifically for Google Analytics. So when I saw in the documentation that there is a ready-made Google Analytics tag that I can just use, that was the first thing I did, data nerd that I am. So there's, of course, also some Google Analytics code in there so I can track whatever happens and it's very interesting. So. Uh, yeah, one extra thing after I tried it for the first time, my images didn't show up, so I had to read more documentation. Oh, man. 
And I found out that I couldn't just reference a file, uh, an image, by just using its URL. Now I have to use a special protocol. It's called a resource image protocol. It's basically like HTTP, but for local files in the extension. So I had to make this one change for that one image that I'm using there. And then I went to click install the staging extension. Now that is something that was very fascinating to me because it basically promises me that I can install that extension locally and then keep developing the extension online. Sounded like Voodoo to me, I liked it. So I downloaded the extension and it's basically just a zip file. So you unzip that file and then it tells you to go, so I'm using Chrome for development, it doesn't have to be Chrome, but it did use it for all their defaults, so I just did it the same thing. And I went to the extensions tab and turned on developer mode. And that revealed the load unpacked extension button. So I unpacked the, the zip file that I downloaded, navigated to it, and as you can see already, it's like full of HTML and JavaScript file. Don't even bother looking at it, because the staging extension does not actually contain your code. What they do so you can keep working on it is they just link to their own server where your code lives. So you can keep working there and it will just load your code for the time being while you're developing from their server. So you just need this one stub to start working. So you select the folder and whoa, there is a extension installed in my browser. It has the name of the extension I built and it looks like it could be working. So I go ahead and go into the code and add a little console lock so I know something is happening and I tried that and it didn't. And then I stopped reading the docs and went to Stack Overflow instead, which is the better docs for everything. And they told me that you should definitely first hit the reload button on the browser. Because even though, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 So I did that and uh, turns out it works. And then I did also another error because I was just being quick and I had one ex example that I downloaded from WebAIM and I just dragged it in the browser and it wouldn't work either. So of course you have to run your demo code on actual HTTP server because the file colon protocol doesn't work so you have to be an HTTP. So uh, whoever hasn't done that or maybe it does not have like MAMP or something installed, there's a teeny tiny one-liner Python that creates a HTTP server that you can beautifully use just for stuff like that. You just navigate on your terminal to your folder and you type python-m simple HTTP server and it creates a server that runs on port 8000 and then I could run my code and it worked and it actually got my locks and I, sh I saw my little icon turning up there and it's beautiful. So after this, and it just literally took like half an hour maybe, and there was a lot of back and forth and stack overflow and me being already close to starting procrastinating again. So it actually worked. So I, being excited about this, uh, I started digging in the documentation and I was quite stunned by the beautiful amount of, amount of stuff that is in there. Because they, being a browser extension, so basically being the browser, rather than just a website that runs in the browser, your code has suddenly a much higher status of, oh, I can do this, rather than, no, nah, I can't. So suddenly things work like cross-domain requests. Whoa, I can load data from everywhere which was one of the things that I, kind of made me sad when I built the uh, original long desk extension, is that the link in the long desk has to be in the very same server. Otherwise, of course, the, I couldn't do the Ajax request and everything would fail and look terrible. And I can work around this. I haven't done this yet, of course. But it's totally going to be in V2. That's a joke. Everybody knows I won't. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing that will totally be in V2 is a browser button, which I don't have yet, but you have probably at least seen that if you have quite a few extensions installed. This is a profile here, by the way, I installed everything. It's a blank profile, because my real profile is like all the way up to left. There's so many extensions in there, and everybody has their own little button, a nice little graphic in there. I don't have that yet, but I will, 
and I will do something of the like as Charles did back in his very first extension. I totally want to reveal those uh, long desk images because if you go back to, do you see this little icon up there? You probably don't because it's very small. So I know it's there because I was looking for it. If it would randomly pop up on a page, I might not find it. So I totally want to implement a little button and I click on it, it will add massive red blinking dash outlines to the image. So I can find if something's there and actually be excited about it. So I'm speaking massively fast. If you have any questions, go ahead and interrupt me at any time because I'm burning through my slides here because I'm actually excited about this. By the way, did I see? Wait a second. I'm not sure if you actually saw this. I'm going all the way back right now. Did you see this? Read the text. <laughs> okay, I'm going to read it for Lucy. It says, if you have working code, you can simply upload it. <laughs> Yo, Carl, I did this just after he basically put me in a spot saying that I should write an extension for him. So did you add that after you said that? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so you can the song that it reads Jason, so I mean, you know. There you go. You can totally just take that and run with it. <laughs> yes, yes, we definitely can. And uh, you can actually just call your API. You don't even have to, you can probably reduce the amount of code you need to write this. Yeah. Or you just go ahead and write that little extension that you wrote last night and just inject it into every page. Should your work just as well. So, V2s, totally gonna happen. And then, of course, this is all just code that I have locally. So there's this sync with production button. And if you're proud enough that it all works, and you hit it, and it allows you to push to production, or even better feeling, it tells you they can roll back from production, which is great. And then it just goes in production mode, and it tells me you can't edit anymore. Kind of a bummer. And then you realize, okay, let's check the settings. And this is where it gets interesting, because there you go ahead and add a little bit of imagery, so you can add a nice little icon. I'm terrible at this, so I just did a little screenshot from the image that it shows on top of an image. And it didn't really fit in the square, so I just made it. And I wrote a little long desk for the long desk. And then I got excited because it started showing me download links, and it tells me that there's a page where I can just point people to, and it will automatically detect their browser, and they can download my extension. Oh my god. And then even better, there's a way to directly export my extension to the Chrome Web Store. So until just recently, and uh, I used this before, and now it's no longer there, so I'm kind of bummed. You could do the same thing for the Mozilla add-on store, whatever it's called. Uh, they have some problems with Mozilla right now. They're gonna, they promised me in the, in the discussion forum yesterday that they were gonna add it back, so I'm gonna promise you the same thing. Um, you can export it there too, or you will. But if you go ahead, you can easily just uh, download the zip for the Chrome App Store and then log in to your Google developer account, which is just your regular Google account on chrome.google.com. And there you can upload this little zip that you just got. And then after some waiting, it took me about an hour or so before it was public, I saw this, and I saw this before, and I saw this on other people. They look, oh my god, this is a real extension, it has real images, people can install it. I did this screenshot yesterday, you can see it's one user, that's me. <laughs> 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 I'm totally going to rely on you to download, so I'm going to count up. This is the link. I want at least, let's say, 20 more users in a year. Because now, after having installed this, I can browse the web, and this is the really tough part right now. I've been looking for examples of pages that have long desk, 
this ugly little thing is actually one of the few that still work because there are like lists of examples and they're so old, most of them are broken by now. This is one of the last ones around. And this is how it looks before. Now wait for it. This is how it looks now after installing the extension. It's wonderful. And you can click on it. And it tells me, oh yeah, look, there's more information. And then there it is. That's the text hidden behind in this tiny little long desk description. And I can read it. And honestly, it makes more sense to me than this, which makes no sense to me at all. All right, so thanks a lot. This, by the way, is my son and my dog. They teach each other all kinds of tricks. So I want you to go out and teach your browsers lots of new tricks. Thanks a lot. Thank you.